week at a special meeting coastal. A win, a bye week, and coming up to Bacon to be a part of this crowd has been a joy. I'm going to tell you. You fight for your life each and every week trying to get a victory, and then you get to come up here and laugh. And by far the best meal I've had all season, I can promise you that. And, and Lloyd, I'll tell you this, my dad is in the Hall of Fame at, as, at University of Florida as a center that played for Coach Burger. I thought he was the baddest skater after last week. I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> Uh, another thing I want to thank you for so much, not only having me, but being a steward of the game. Uh, I'm a, I, this is my third time up here. I, I, I remember it was week one. I just took the job back in, in 21 in November. Got to come up and feel the hospitality of, of this group. Got to come last year in, in our first season and now in our second season. To be able to see the honor and respect that you hold the game with, uh, it gives coaches like myself uh, Goosebumps, to be honest with you, and how you honor and respect the high school game um, from the bottom all the way up uh, is pretty special. And how you rag each other is awesome. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. Well, to tell you a little bit about what's going on uh, at Georgia Southern, I really feel if, you, if you've been watching us over the last year, um, kind of the perfect storm is happening for us. Uh, down at Georgia Southern. Everybody asked me when I first took the job, you know, Coach, why did you have interest in, in it? And this game, as you know, is all about people. And you've seen the game for a long time. And you really got to have four things, I think, to, to really have great seasons and great futures. Um, the first thing is to have great leadership. And Dr. Kyle Marrero and Jerry Binko, our president AD, are just phenomenal leaders. They had a unique vision of being able to say, you know what, we want to take Georgia Southern, who had had six national championships in the FCS, and we want to grow it in FBS to be a national product. Why can't it be the next Central Florida? Why can't it be the next Cincinnati? Why can't it be the next Tulane? It's the hottest recruiting base in the country. Let's go ahead and pour the resources in to be able to bring quality coaches in, build quality facilities, uh, and, and do something really special. They were aligned. Their leadership was aligned. They committed $100 million to new facilities for our fo football program, our baseball program, and our basketball program. And those facilities, not just dreams, they're building. They're actually, our indoor facility is just finished. It's our first season in it. Imagine in 2021 when I first came to Georgia Southern, that team had either had practice canceled or delayed 23 times during that season. During the week of Troy, they never got on the football field. They practiced in a gym. Last year, we had 17 different different delays. Got all the practices in, but you know how players are, the creatures of routine. So to be able to build those and get the resources that we need at a high level, that's what you want in your leadership. The second thing that was very fortunate for me is to be able to acquire really, really good coaches. Coaches that have high character, that have development in the game, they care for kids, they have care and concern. They recruit their ever-loving butt off because I don't care how good a coach is. You want guys like these running around and, and playing for you. It's about the people that surround you. You show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And to have the quality of coaches that we do, and Brandon Bailey, who I think is one of the most young, uh, talented defensive coordinators in the country. You see Brian Ellis for the second year now at, at Georgia Southern, what he's doing right now, a top five passing offense down at Georgia Southern. And then Turner West, um, our special teams coach, huge play at, in the Coastal Carolina game. All three guys from the great state of Georgia grew up here, know what Georgia football is all about, uh, and are doing a tremendous job. Next thing is you got to have these guys, and I'm looking at one I, I near and dear love very much. Um, you have to have players that have unbelievable high character. They don't like the game. They don't love the game. They live it on a daily basis. They have captain capabilities. They, they, they want to see the team success. They know that their individual success is just a broad product of what the team does. And we have that right now. And you look at the guys that we have, and they, are, and they come from the state of Georgia. Out of a 120-man roster, 87 of them are from Georgia. Our last two recruiting cycles, we brought 55 men from this state and brought them to Georgia Southern. We're following a blueprint, a blueprint that is, was followed by Coach Russell, and we're emulating it to a T. And then the last thing you got to have, and I, I looked at this one, the guy that's near and dear to my heart from the great city of Macon, Leonard Bevel. You have to have great alumni. You have to have a great fan base and great alumni. And I think great alumni do four things. They give their time, they give their knowledge, 
They give their network and they give their resources. And right now that is happening. And I hope if you didn't get to see last Saturday, uh, we were on NFL Network, national TV. We set an all-time attendance record. 26,000, over 26,000 in Statesboro, Georgia, beat by 1,000 fans. Uh, the hills were filled, and it was just an awesome, awesome night. So we're going this way, and we love adopting people. Uh, you know, there, there are some unbelievable great schools. I see all the shirts around, but we are in the great state of Georgia. And every time we don't play you, I hope you'll root for us. I really do. Um, and because we're going to do as much honor and respect as we can representing this state and the kids that grow up and play high school football and come to Georgia Southern, we're going to honor it with our play and how hard we play. And we appreciate anybody's support from this state. And we appreciate you having us here tonight. Well, we next up, we've got a bye this week. We're four and one. We're getting ready to go. Uh, we just got a big win over a, a North Carolina team. Now we got to go to Virginia and play James Madison, uh, who's also having a great season right now. Um, and so uh, both of us have buys. Both of us are undefeated in conference right now, and it's going to be a great, great game. It's going to be on ESPN2 just announced, so we'll get a chance to be on national TV again and uh, have a chance to play at 12 noon. So I hope you'll tune in and, and root for the Eagles. With that, I'd love to answer any of your questions that you got. If you want to talk, what about Georgia Southern? What about college football? Uh, any topics that are out there? Man, please, please fire away. And Coach Ashton, thank you so much for what you've done for the game. I didn't get, I don't get impressed with movie stars when I was out in LA. I get impressed by guys like you. So I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Say it one more time. I'm sorry. <clears throat> The question was, uh, how is Chandler Strong doing our starting center? Um, Chandler is doing absolutely awesome. He's in his second year, uh, was redshirted his first year, had an injury uh, that we needed to require surgery. He got he got um, better in late in the season. We decided to redshirt him, and now he's our starting center. He's doing an absolutely amazing job. I think he's going to be a four-year starter for us. Um, one of the toughest, most smart linemen I have. My dad is a 50-year NFL and college O-line coach. I grew up being an O-line coach's son. He still coaches. He's 75 years old. He coaches me every day of his life. I, I've got him this iPad. I've got him this iPad. And if you don't know, my brother's the head coach in Western Kentucky. So coaches never stop coaching. We never stop coaching. And so every morning he wakes up 5 a.m. still coaching hours. He gets on that iPad and he watches both practices. Never watches a skill player. Don't says anything about the quarterback. No, but he coaches. He, he literally looks at every office alignment. And I get 15 pages of notes every morning. <laughs> Every morning, and I get dog cussed every morning. Uh, like an oh my coach's son does. But one of his favorite guys is Chandler. Uh, he's a big fan of them, and having coached 12 Hall of Famers in the NFL, he knows what one looks like. And Chandler's representing not only Middle Georgia, uh, but he's representing Georgia Southern extremely well. Thanks for that question. Yes, sir. What are the strengths of your team and what are the weaknesses of your team? That's a great question. What, uh, the question was, what are the strengths right now for Georgia Southern, and what are the areas of growth? I don't like weakness. I, I, like, I like areas of growth. Um, our strength right now, uh, to be honest with you, is our ability defensively to get off the field. Um, I, I expected our offense to continue at a – we're one of the top, you know, 15 offenses in the country, one of the top five passing offenses. And going into year two, that was the expectation. Coach Ellis has a really hard job because I'm an offensive coach. I'm, I'm in his ear 24-7. I expected that standard to stay. What we needed was our defense to raise. And bringing Brandon Bailey in, um, who went to Georgia Southern, wife is from Statesboro, Georgia, um, bringing him back here, uh, he does two things. One, he has unbelievable third down efficiency rating and unbelievable turnover ratio. So, uh, ratio. so when you look at what's happened to us, you combine getting the ball back with a really good offense, that's how you get two, three score separations. Um, and when you look at our four wins this year, it's because we had turnovers and we are batting about 29% on third down efficiency to offenses. So we get off the field right now. Last two ball games, uh, Coastal Carolina's 4-14 on third down, and we had four turnovers against the three-time reigning MVP uh, in Grayson McCall. 
You know, so that's the type of play that all of a sudden you look up and you're up three scores in the fourth quarter and you've pulled away. And that's been, that was the difference between last year and every game being close and me losing about five years off my life to now all of a sudden you look up and you go to Ball State and you're supposed to win and you do your job. You're at home playing Coastal Carolina. You're supposed to do your job and win by win by more than one score. You do your job, and that a lot has to do with our defense. Where's our area of growth right now? We've had two games where we have played all three phases really well, and that was the last two. Um, before that, we had taken kind of turns. Um, you know, even even um, we go up to Wisconsin, we're leading 14 to seven in the second half, and we turn the ball over offensively. Kind of lose, we've kind of lost um, momentum in that game. Um, even even in the two early wins versus UAB and Citadel, play great special teams, play great offense. Oh gosh, defense slips a little bit. You know, the last two games we've really come together and played in all three phases, and we need to keep that consistency. It's a great question. Thank you. Yes. What's the benefit now all the teams are wearing those home covers over yeah. the helmets at practice? Yeah, you, you know, we, as the game goes on, this is the fastest, most violent game there is on the face of the earth. And it, it is, it's getting faster. I mean, the athletes nowadays, I remember when King and I were at Auburn, and, and the, their fat, the, there were huge people and just, and you thought, gosh, they can't get any bigger. They can't get any faster. Well, now it's 30 years later, and yes, they're bigger, and they're faster, and, and it's even more violent. So the two things have happened great for our sport. One is the rules coming into play to try to protect the game, but two, the technology. And one of the things that you do see us have, you don't see it during game day, but on practices, we do have what's basically a foam covering that goes over top of the helmets to eliminate some of the concussions that typically you see in practice. Some of the most violent hits that you see are in practice from Clyde day in and day out, especially with linemen. And so um, these protective helmets, scientifically proven, have, have been less. I'll be honest with you, we have not had a concussion um, in practice in practice since I've been at Georgia Southern um, because of these. And, and these are things that they do cost money, but I recommend any high school, if you're able to acquire them, um, they are a wonder. Uh, I didn't know what it would be like, but now having gone through it for two years, there's a reason. If the NFL is doing it, there's a reason that they're doing it for. They're protecting their players. Good question. Yes, sir. Howard, we're a family gatherers after you got beat up in recruitment by your brother. Um, <laughs> the question was, how is family gatherings if I get beat up by my, bro my brother? Well, one, he's my younger brother, so I don't lose to him very often. <laughs> my, dad, my dad, when I was growing up, he would always tell me, son, if he gets hurt or he gets in trouble, I'm coming after you, not him. So I took care of him for a long time, but when it comes to competing, I, I'm not going to lose him. Like, I think my mom's greatest fear is if we ever play each other as head coaches. Last year, we were both trending towards bowl games. And one of those bowl projections, she calls me and she's in hysteria. And she, I go, what is wrong, mom? Is dad okay? Are you okay? I just saw a bowl projection. You played your brother in the what an ever bowl. And I go, <laughs> I said, well, if that happens, it'll be okay. But no, we compete very much. And um, uh, he's got some recruits. I've gotten some recruits. Um, I, I try to get more than him, but uh, we we do uh, we do share information. Uh, we are. Oh gosh, yeah, and, and my son, yeah, my, my son is there. So my son, um, when I was at USC, uh, committed to, committed to my brother to go play in Western Kentucky. He's a backup quarterback up there, about that big around, but can spin it and is learning learning how to be not only a good player but a good coach. And so I get done, I, I get done in, uh, at SC. I get the opportunity to come to Georgia Southern. It's in, it's in November. And I called him, I said, hey, you want to come play for dad? He said, hell no, I don't want to play for dad. You're too tough on the dad. I'm going to play for Uncle Tyson. <laughs> yes, sir.
Uh, I don't know if they named the whole town of Russell. You know, so, um, you know, to be real with you, Statesboro, Georgia is Earl Russell. Um, and we all know it. Uh, it's, it's from what he accomplished at Georgia as a defensive coordinator to what he built. He, you know, there was nothing. It was 7,000 students. And, you know, football was the doorstep that 12 men decided to build a, a football program and hire Eric Russell. And he brought built blue collar toughness, discipline, and brought a whole town together. Um, he deserves to be in the Football Hall of Fame. We're fighting like hell to get him there. Um, he's, he is what college football is all about. And um, every honor he, get, he gets, he deserves. And there's, there's a reason that when I first took the job and they asked me, what do you think, Coach? And I said, well, whatever the traditions and honors that Coach Russell did, we're honoring every one of those traditions. We'll fight like hell for innovation, but there's a reason six national championships are on that wall, and it's because of that man. So um, there is no state sport in Georgia without Rick Russell. So whatever we want to name, let's name it all. He's, he's a special man. How much money in the budget have y'all saved from not buying knee pads anymore? <laughs> I tell you, they're about that big around now. <laughs> and are they the color of the player? Because you've got some players that are wearing short pants now. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it, it's, I, it was the first time this week, if you can imagine. Um, this is, I mean, we're five games in, and for the first time this week, a crew came to me and said, Coach, hey, we're, we're a little bit sticklers on, you know, being able to pull the pants down, which I agree with. He, he, probably one of the biggest injuries right now is, is quad contusions, uh, just because the pants aren't pulled down far enough. You know, a lot of the players don't like them over their knees, but they do need to be at least covering the thigh, um, and we make our, our kids do it. And that was really the first crew that had ever mentioned anything. They're getting higher and higher and higher. They'll be shorts before before we know it. The, guy, the guys like to run fast, but but uh, they don't like things covered in these. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of them are too high, to be honest with you. That's one of the. It's a fast, violent game, and thigh bruises are really probably one of the. That and AC joints are probably the two biggest uh, injuries that you see nowadays. One from two little, little shoulder pads, uh, or not covering your thighs. That's a good comment. It does happen. Well, any other questions, guys? Yes. Hey, Coach, um, do you think you throw the ball to Caleb Hood the entire game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the question was, um, could we throw it to Caleb Hood, number seven, our leading receiver? Caleb's also he, uh, this year set the all-time receiving record for our school in receptions and yards, uh, and so has had a great career. Just had another hundred-yard game. Uh, versus Coastal Carolina, some big catches down the stretch. Uh, but one of the things that we've got going for us right now is um, one, a quarterback named Davis Spring. We had Kyle Van Trees last year. Davis Spring came to us uh, from Tulsa. He's, he's ranked number five in the country right now in passing. He's making a great job. He's doing a great job of distributing the football. And a lot of times he does find Caleb, but he's averaging nine receivers. He's thrown to a, a, a game as high as been 11 different receivers. And, and I've always said, and I tell I tell Whiteouts that you don't want to be the guy. You know, if you're the guy, you're going to get like what happened like versus Coastal. We had about half, three quarters of time doubling Sam, the big big 15 for Coastal Carolina. You want to have a variety of weapons plus a running back like Jalen White and, and OJ Arnold uh, to be able to spread the ball around so you can get that hundred yards. Because if you're the only guy on the field and the quarterback's just looking to you, it's going to be a hard night on you. But Caleb's doing so good. Graduate of our university this fall. Uh, team captain. All-time leading receiver in the history of the program. Uh, he's a special soul. And he's he's one that when I first came here, uh, he said, Coach, we're all in. Whatever you say. He could have gone anywhere and was offered the opportunity to go anywhere by a lot of schools. And he said, no. I'm staying at Statesboro. We're going to build something here special. And so he's a he's guy that's near and dear to my heart. Yes, sir. What was your first thought when the putter took off for that first time? Oh, God. What is he doing? <laughs> no, I, you know, I got asked that question in the media. The coach was had a call or, or what happened there. 
And, you know, sometimes really good athletes, and Alex Smith, our, our punter, we got this beautiful six foot six Australian putter that could kick the heck out of the ball, put it wherever he could put it in that trash can over there if he wanted to. He could place it wherever he wants. Um, but he's still learning the game. And so we, we do have a sprint punt, and he's a lefty. We're playing Coastal Carolina, and he starts to the left, and there's nobody there. And he just, it's fourth and 19. <laughs> he said, Coach, there was nobody for 30 yards. And so I just decided to go. <laughs> and thank God he got 21 yards. He goes, <laughs> I, said, I said, Alex, that's a great play. It was only our lives on the line if you didn't make it, but that's a great play. No, but, I, you know, sometimes great players make plays like that. And um, I remember Kyle Van Trees first uh, Ball State last year in the fourth quarter. He throws, he runs it naked and throws the deep post. We hadn't thrown it one time since we'd been there. They said, Coach, he's open. I'm throwing it. And so sometimes great, great players make great players and overcome their coaching. And uh, he, that was one. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after five games, what's my opinion of the new clock rules? Obviously, I'm an offensive guy, um, and so I think all the offensive guys, you're Coach Kelly, you know, to come out and say, oh, we don't like it, we don't like it. And if you're an offensive guy, you want opportunities. You want you want plays. That's, that's the way. I do think it is changing again. Uh, even we were a tempo team last year. We even increased our tempo more. Um, we're averaging in the high 70s right now. Uh, and uh, I think it's right at 78 plays. We are at 85 plays the last game. Um, and so I think you're going to see an increase in tempo, uh, especially with the guys that have uh, a number of skilled athletes that spread the field. Um, you're going to want opportunities to be able to uh, – your average in the first game, I was like, oh my God, we only had the ball four times in the first half. So you're going from where you had 12 to 12 to 14 series a game uh, to now where sometimes it's 10. So you're losing two, three, four series with this new rule. Uh, so turnover ratio is even more important. Third down efficiency is even more important because you just don't have the number of opportunities you used to have. Uh, you got to make the most of each opportunity. Yes, sir. Yeah, it, you know, when I was first got into coaching, it was I ride Z short, A42 time, Y shallow exit. And now you say cross. <laughs> and you go run the play. Um, you know, we, we really have gone from playbooks that are this big to smaller and, and I, I really I really think that started a lot with God rest his soul Mike Leach um, who really said you know what I'm going to put my game plan on a napkin and we're going to get really good at eight plays but we're going to be the best in the world in uh, those eight plays and I think that's where you started seeing um, the tempo show up um, and and so the nature of the nature of tempo is to try to make defenses become stagnant because if you're in man coverage you have to identify which man you have uh, you have to identify formations are they unbalanced what's the personnel grouping uh, did they line up in are they in 12 personnel but they showed four wide sets out of it there's a lot to it and tempo makes lesser calls. Uh, for defensive coordinators, um, so you don't and you don't see the stimming and hiding of coverages that you do when you see huddle teams or slower offenses. You're able to disguise coverages, pressures, and confuse quarterback. When you go fast, you have to show your hand, and uh, so that's that's the nature of the philosophy uh, of the offense. Is one create conditioning concerns, create alignment concerns, simplify defenses, and produce more opportunities. For your offensive more plays. Great question. Yes, sir. Speaking of tempo, what would your solution be for teams that uh, tell players to lay down? I think it was really fast tempo. Would it be to sit out the whole series? Yeah, it's, it's an issue in college football right now. Um, I, I don't hold it against the refs. They, they, their number one job is health and safety of the players. I don't believe in doing it. I don't think it's ethical. I don't think it should be part of the game. If you're hurt, hurt, lay down. Um, 
If you're not, then stay on the field and let's go play. Uh, but but for refs, their job is when they see a player down, they're forced. Their hand is forced. They have to, they have to stop. Yes, sir. In recruiting, uh, going extremely well, as you see for us, we really are a, a, a development program that we've signed 40 high school players in the last two recruiting cycles. Um, and the majority of those players from the state of Georgia, if you look at all our commitments right now, they are high school players uh, right now. And, and uh, we're sitting right at, I think, about 17 commitments right now. Uh, and and the majority of them are from Georgia and the attached states of Florida, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina. That's our footprint, and that's what we're staying with. We're really pleased with the guys that we've got. Um, obviously, as we have continued success, uh, and as they have continued success, you got to hold on to them. We got to we got to beat the likes of uh, the SEC and others to hold on. Uh, but um, right now, it's going extremely well. Uh, we do bring some guys back, like T.J. Smith, number five. You see our safety brother played at Georgia, first round draft pick and safety for Georgia. Was at Kansas State. We brought him back home to Georgia, where he's going to be, I think, an All Conference player for us. Prince Green, uh, who was at Illinois from the state of Georgia, we brought him back as a safety also. Um, and so we are diving into some specific needs, uh, but in that transfer portal, but not the majority. That's not who we are. We can garner great players from high school programs right here in Georgia. Thanks for that question. Yes, sir. Yeah, so each each student has to be has to have insurance, um, and so it's either through the university or through their parents. Um, majority of programs, to be honest with you, all of them keep their parents' insurance because when they when they're not with us and they go home, which they they're probably at home probably 30, 40 days a year, that they're still under their insurance. Now we cover all out of pocket expense. So if they have a surgery and there's a deductible, we cover that as as universities. So it, it goes to, they may say, oh, he wasn't on university insurance. He's probably on his parents' insurance. And then the University of Colorado picks up the tab for any out-of-pocket expense. Well, guys, I appreciate it so much. Thank you.